few days ago, as of this recording, the latest trailer for the most recent cinematic outing of Batman dropped. Uh, what's funny and what's probably going to prove my point is no matter when you're watching this video, you could be watching this video maybe 10, 15 years down the road, odds are there it's still going to be relevant because odds are another trailer for another Batman movie is probably going to have dropped fairly soon. Um, and the internet went, you know, fairly crazy, you know, reviewing it, looking over the trailer and all of this, uh, you know, what are some Easter eggs we find? What do we, what do we know from, from the trailer? Um, and my reaction to the entire thing was a resounding, uh, here we go again. Yes, folks, I... I believe I am now officially, actually I have been for some time, but I think now I can finally say it out loud. I am part of a small uh, portion of the comic book fan industry who can now say with complete confidence, I am sick of Batman. I am. I am tired of him. I am so, and especially as a movie character, I am just, I am just so tired whenever I see another one of these trailers, um, or almost anything with him. Now let's, now don't blow a gasket here. I like Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. While I don't think they hold up, I still think that Tim Burton series of Batman films is one of the most important film series that ever came out. Uh, I love uh, Arkham Asylum. I, I love Batman the Animated Series. It's one of my all-time favorite shows. So I like Batman. I'm just tired of him. And I'm tired of him as the lead of a movie for a couple of reasons. Number one, all of these movies look exactly the fucking same. Batman visually has not moved a damn inch since the 80s. And, every, and I am sympathetic to the reason why it's very difficult to take Batman out of that darker aesthetic, that more realistic tone, because when you do, you get the Joel Schumacher films, and I think we all know, using the Joel Schumacher films as an example, how forgiving and understanding fans are. So they all look alike, and secondly, Batman as a character, there's only two ways you can really go with Batman in film. Uh, or in a lot of medium, really, you can usually go with the, he's the most perfect, perfectest, smartest, most wonderful human being that ever lived. He's the fastest, he's the smartest, he's the bravest, he's the this, this, he's the that, this. And when you do that, there's not a lot of wiggle room for any kind of character. Or, he broods. That's it. And that has been the, the go-to for Batman and Batman movies for the, for, like I say, since the fucking 80s. And again, I understand, I don't need anybody coming at me with the, well, actually, I understand that that is Batman's character. And, you know, if you are going to make a story about Batman, that's kind of brooding is kind of his thing. I get it. But what you also need to understand is that Going from the Tim Burton film, there have been 11 fucking Batman or Batman-themed movies since then. 11 of them. So that is 11 different versions of I'm brooding and sad. It gets old. Now, this new Batman movie may be fantastic. I'm not saying it's it looks bad, or I'm not saying it can't be good. I'm just saying I don't care at this point. The movie could make me care, but as of now, I don't. And honestly, you know, if I was DC, I think they have had greater success 
mining the very deep well of characters they have to work with other than Batman. Why do you think the Arrowverse on the CW has been so successful? Because they're using little known characters or characters who have not had a lot of live action representation. Okay, and even though I may not have liked these movies, why do you think Wonder Woman, Aquaman, uh, Shazam have been as successful as they are? Because they're different characters. It's not the same guy in a Halloween costume being sad. But I also sympathize with the bizarre situation that DC and Warner Brothers find themselves in because... You can't go very long without introducing Batman if you're doing a bigger world. People always want to know, where is Batman? Where is Superman? So you can't go very long without introducing one of them into a cinematic universe like that. Because they're the most recognizable, and also Batman especially is the most tried and true, guaranteed box office return. So I understand the corner that they're painted into, especially as they are trying to throw everything at the wall to compete with Marvel. So, instead of just complaining about it, I'm here to offer a solution of what I would do if I were put in charge and I had to make another Batman And I would come at it from the side. I would combine the best of both worlds, meaning the Batman that we all know is a guaranteed box office return and the lesser used, unexplored parts of the mythology. Batman himself, as I've said, is unbelievably overexposed. But ironically, at the same time the trailer for this movie dropped, a trailer for a new video game dropped, wherein the heroes of this Batman video game is not Batman, it's his supporting cast. I have always found Batman's supporting cast to be far, far more interesting than Batman himself. I am a much bigger fan of Robin, of Nightwing, of Batgirl. Uh, Huntress, the Birds of Prey, then I am a Batman. I think they are more interesting characters. And yet their representation, their presence in uh, his, his uh, movies are practically non-existent. Robin was in the two Joel Schumacher ones. That's, that's been about it, folks. So if I had to make another Batman movie, if it was up to me, then what I would do is I would make it, but I would make it from the point of view of his most accessible and his most famous recurring character. I would do a series of film from the point of view of Robin. Now, hear me out on this, because... For those who aren't aware, there have been multiple Robins in the Batman universe. So my idea is that you have Batman in these movies, but the point of view, our main character, is Robin. So Batman is there, but he's like the dad in an 80s movie. He's there to offer advice, he's there to get somebody out of trouble, but he's not the focus of the film. So you can still have Batman but he's not the person the story is about. See, you know, see where I'm coming from? So, given the multiple Robins, this also means that if you go this route, not only do you get that magic word that every movie studio loves to hear, trilogy, but you also have ample opportunity to spin characters off into standalone films. So here you are creating a larger franchise using almost completely untapped characters. Let's let's walk through here. So my main idea is a series of three films based on the three most 
well-known Robin. So the first film would star, of course, Dick Grayson. And it would all be seen from his point of view. So we get his origin story. Circus acrobat, parents killed, uh, adopted by Bruce Wayne, becomes Robin. Now you could go two roads with this. You could have the entire movie be Robin as... Uh, I'd say I'd make him an adolescent. I wouldn't make him like a little kid. I'd make him, you know, 11, 12, somewhere in there. Um, so you can do the whole movie that way. But I think what would be the smarter way is to start there. But then Disney montage it in the middle and have him as a teenager in, you know, 18, 19 and whatnot as still being Robin. I would name the movie after the excellent Batman the Animated Series episode, Robin's Reckoning. That would be the title. I wouldn't say Batman Robin's Reckoning. I'd release it as Robin's Reckoning. That's it. To make sure people knew this is a story about Robin. In that story, a teen, a college-age Dick Grayson, uh, still being Robin, finds the man who murdered his parents is coming back to town, and he goes out looking for revenge. So I think this would be a perfect arc for a movie. You could totally expand it out. You could have guest cameos by Batman villains in the in the early stages. And then, you know, finish it out with him confronting the guy who murdered his parents and deciding not to take revenge. Now, at the end of this film, you can do one of two things. You can either have it end there, or you can have it end with him giving up being Robin to come up with his own identity that of Nightwing. And then you can spin that actor off into a series of films about Nightwing, which you want to talk about a, a license to print money, do a really good Nightwing movie. Nightwing, I think, is more popular than Batman. Nightwing has a huge fan base, and he has never been in a movie. Ever. But I think if you did it, the audience would definitely come. So that's movie number one. Movie number two, and I think if you're a Batman fan or you know the mythology, you know what's coming. And I think you can probably guess at what I would title the second movie. The second movie I would title A Death in the Family. So here, as we enter this film, Dick Grayson has quit being Robin. He's become Nightwing. He's off on his own adventures. And... Batman now takes in Jason Todd. And for those who don't know the comics, Jason Todd is known for basically one and a half things. The half thing is he is basically uh, Harry Potter and Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. He is snotty. He is whiny. He's irritating. He's an ass. Fans hated this motherfucker. So that's the half thing he's known for. What's the main thing he's known for? Same thing that up until recently Gwen Stacy was best known for. He's known for dying. He is beaten to death and blown up by the Joker. So here, you get that wonderful thing of let's introduce a new Joker because everybody wants a new fucking Joker. And you also get that wonderful thing that everybody insists for the middle chapter ever since Empire Strikes Back. Your middle chapter has to be so dark. Well, what is darker than killing Robin? Hmm? What is darker than that? Not a whole lot. And matter of fact, that's part of the arc of these three films. Because the death of Robin, one of the most iconic moments in comics, and one of the most iconic moments in Batman, is the point where Batman starts going really dark because he just lost, you know, because of him, this kid got killed. So that's how you end the second movie. But then we bring things back around with our Return of the Jedi, and you bring back the return of Robin, and this time with my favorite Robin, Tim Drake. Tim Drake being a natural-born master detective who uh, is a huge fan of Batman and is able to deduce who Batman really is. He takes it upon himself to become the new Robin because he feels that Batman has gone a little too crazy since uh, Jason Todd died, and he's there to bring the title back. So there's your fucking movie. 
all from the point of view of Tim Drake, him figuring out who Batman is, training and all that, and then at the end of the film, he takes up the mantle of Robin. Now again, here's the fun part. Tim Drake has a pretty dedicated fan base. I'm one of them. So what can Tim Drake spin off into? Well, the Tim Drake Robin had his own comic for a long time. It was a very long running, uh, long running series. So he could go off and do his own movies. He also helped form the very popular team Young Justice with Superboy, Wonder Girl, Secret, uh, Arrowette, Impulse. So you could do those films. Just based on these, you could also do a spinoff where you introduce Batgirl as Barbara Gordon, and then you could do a three-film arc with her, where she gets shot and paralyzed, and then becomes Oracle. And then uh, we introduce the Birds of Prey, the right Birds of Prey, not that piece of shit Harley Quinn movie. So you see, just from this, think about it. Think about all of the movies and all of the different new stories that could come out of this. And all by pushing Batman just slightly to the back and slightly to the side, where he's still, the, he's basically, in these films, Batman becomes the Jay and Silent Bob. He's the recurring character who links all of these other characters together, but he's not the main focus, except, of course, in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back and Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. But that's not the point. The point is you can get out. You can mine this untapped well of potential all by not making Batman the star. I, I don't think it's that hard to do. I really don't. I, I think you just gotta take a chance and trust that the fans will follow you. I mean, if, if they followed you for that clusterfuck of an 80, 80s album cover that was Aquaman and that whatever the hell Shazam was. If they followed you there, I think they're going to follow you here. I would be pretty sure. Give it a shot. Worst it can do is not work and you get another Batman and Robin, which quite frankly say everything you want about Batman and Robin. But you know what? People remember it it wasn't boring, and people are still talking about it. So, you know, was it really a failure? Not in the long term. So, that is my suggestion for if you have to do another Batman film, maybe this is a different and better way to take it. My opinion, so do with it as you will. All right. So that's my take. I'm sorry for the, you know, the, the glare going on. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's better to do like my girlfriend does and listen to these kind of as a podcast and not as a, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, I thank you all for joining. If you have some ideas of how to make uh, a different Batman movie, then, you know, mention them in the comments. I'm always happy to hear them. But uh, that's my two cents. So thank you very much. And until next time. Drive safe, and I will see you at the movies.